Hello and welcome back to Wall Street Training's Complex Leverage Buyout Modeling Course. At this point, you should have already completed our previous two sections in which we created the Core Projection Standalone Value Model for JCPenney. What we will now do is build our LBO summary starting with our valuation as well as our summary sources and uses and this will basically drive the entire projection model. When you go to refinancing forward. scenarios all the way on the right hand side and that will basically be this section here, U, column U18. Let's now fill in our refinancing scenarios pages here. The first thing I want you to do is let's start inputting some of our assumptions. Go to U18 and in U18 I want you to hit for me the following percentages. Here in column U we will calculate the fees. These are the fees that we have to pay to the banks for the new debt that we will raise. 0.5% 50 basis points in U18. You have to type in the percent. 0.5% for our revolver. U19 is 0.75%. You have to type in a percent anytime it's under 1%. Term loans, 75 basis points. Senior notes, 1% and then 1.5%. These are the fees that we will have to pay. These are fees that we have to pay upon the issuance or raising of new debt. These fees, if you recall from our leverage by overview, when we went over the accounting treatment for expenses, this gets amortized and capitalized on a balance sheet due to the matching principle of accounting. Okay? So we'll see that shortly. In U23, the percent of equity repurchased, we're going to leave that blank right there because we're going to fill that in in V, W, and X. Tender costs. As we may have recalled from our, again, our leverage buyout overview module, our tender costs are basically costs to uh, uh, refinance. These are what we might call a good guy premium because we don't necessarily have repayment penalties. Now, in addition, the proper, we're going to use percentages here as well. The proper way to fully develop this tender costs and accrued interests is to do a full timeline and cash flow model of each of these tranches of debt. Recall, we've lumped, as we did in the Advanced Financial Modeling Core Model Module, we've lumped them into one tranche here. But in your time, you will build a timeline and cash flow model for each tranche of debt, and you will fully say, okay, at this six months, I got X dollar, then this, 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 and this. Fully map out those dollars and you would discount it back and take the present value of all those future cash flows from the interest perspective, that is your total dollar of tender costs. Here we're going to just assume a straightforward percentage. So U25, you would say 0.5%, 1%, 1%, 1.5%. These are currently made up numbers, but again, to get more precision in here, you would actually develop that cash flow model. Let's talk about deal structure now. Now I want you to think about this as we are doing this. Folks, in a no transaction scenario, status quo, are you going to raise additional debt? Will you raise a new revolver, a new term loan, senior sub debt? Will you have tender costs? Will you want to refinance any of your debt? The answer to all of that is no. You will not do anything. So I basically need a whole column of zeros in column V. V18, 0, 0, 0, 0. In V23, no equity is repurchased, 0%. In uh, the existing revolver, are we going to refinance this? No, 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 no transaction costs, 0%. So in column V, you'll get me these zeros straight down as well, and please make sure that you do have a space here in row 22 and 24. Now, in a no refinance scenario, we're not going to refinance, our existing debt remains and stays on the books. I'm going to give you this deal structure. Where did I come up with these figures from? Well, here's what I did. Number one, you must understand the capital markets and the appetite for leveraged buyouts from both a bank as well as a corporate bond notes perspective. You will get guidance from the capital markets as to the correct deal structure that might be doable in this current scenario, the credit industry. You must get them, uh, you must get those numbers from them, but usually there's a nice little guideline. You can put in percentages there, but usually you have, I don't know, anywhere between Let's say anywhere from on your revolver, 
uh, as well as your term loans, your bank debt, you might borrow annual between, and this is a very broad range, 20 40%. And of course, from your corporate bonds and your sub, you might borrow the remainder. The very, very rough guidelines. Here, what we just assume is the following. In W18 notice, this is the revolver capacity. That is just the capacity, the amount of revolver that you can borrow up to. So V18, uh, sorry, W18, type in $1,500. Term loans, $2,000. Cedar notes, $3,000. And then $1,500. And again, this deal structure, you have to come back. First of all, you can put in some base assumptions. You want to know roughly, let's say, you'll raise anywhere between 70 and maybe 80% of debt. And then of that, you'll then segment it on rough percentages. However, you will, after you finish the sources and uses, you will have to come back and modify this number to make sure it makes sense that you're not borrowing uh, too much or too little on any particular tranche. So just keep that in mind. You will come back and you will have to fix that. This is good for now because we've already done that. In an LBO scenario, in W23, how much of the purchase uh, equity will you repurchase? 100%. You're buying back everything. And we'll do the same thing later on in two seconds for column X. We will also say the same thing, 100% purchase. When we finish this core LBO model, we will start our enhancements to this core model, even more complexity. In that case there, we will actually insert a new column and create a brand new refinancing scenario for a 40% recap. Then your percent equity repurchase is 40%. I'm not doing that here right now for two reasons. Number one, I want to make sure you understand the base LBO model, the core LBO model itself. Then when we do the enhancements, I will show you how to expand and scale this model up easily by adding in more sensitivity and more scenario analysis or analyses and that's why I'm making sure we segment this properly so you make sure again you get the core concepts here make sure you understand how the core models develop and then also how to easily expand this. We'll add in a new layer of debt, mezzanine. We'll also add in cash versus uh, picks paid in kind. So we add in all of those items there we will easily be able to see how this is built up. Now in cell W25 recall that this, oh, but again, this section down here is, do you want to refinance? So this is a refinance switch. Zero equals no, and one equals yes. This scenario here, W17 says it's a no refinance, existing debt remains. If that is the case, then do you want to refinance all your debt? Well, no refinance, existing debt remains, no. These will all be zeros. Do not refinance any of my existing debt. And I'll put in 1% transaction cost. That's usually based off percentage of total enterprise value. So, in cell W25, give me four zeros and then a 1% for my transaction costs. So please put in those numbers right there that are now highlighted for you on the screen. Column X18. You will type in for me the same $1,500, that's your revolver capacity. That won't change. Now, think about this. You are, yes, refinance. You refinance all of your existing debt. What does that mean? That means these numbers will be ones, by the way. Why? Because yes, you will refinance. Also, these numbers now will have to increase versus the no refinance. Why? Because you still want to max out your borrowings, your debt capacity. Because you still want to max out your debt borrowings, your, your total debt capacity, and you have now refinanced your existing debt, you actually will have an increase to your new debt that you will raise, you get to redo your capital structure. This is actually not that great of a scenario. Why not? Because when you refinance more debt, what do you get? More expenses. You have to pay expenses in a form. Let me actually erase this slide. If you refinance, you have to pay two different types of expenses. Your debt financing fees, those are expensive. You also have to do what? Pay tender costs to refinance the old debt. So therefore, this actually, by having to refinance, result in what? Higher expenditures out, which means lower returns. That is why you always want to see if you can not have to refinance. Try not to refinance your existing debt. Not always the case. So X19, now we just agreed that we need to borrow more money. So let's put in a deal structure that's higher. I'm going to put in 3000 5000 and 2500 Again, Later on, in our enhancements, we will actually add a mezzanine layer that will actually have cash paid interest, paid in kind, pick, as well as even warrant attached to this in our enhancements to the LBO model. Then you'll see that we're going to decrease these a bit and we're going to add in a new mezzanine layer there. So our deal structure will also again be yet modified.